Seven minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock, time for a look at the news for a Thursday, the first day of June for 2017. Well, around 145 customers were thrown into darkness last night around 9 o'clock in Jackson. Witnesses reported bright flashes of light could be seen and loud boom sounds, followed by the outage which affected several businesses along Main Street. PG&E was notified of the incident and dispatched a crew to find the source of the outage. After investigating with the Jackson Fire Department, PG&E discovered that the source of the commotion was some blown equipment atop a pole near Merslack Signs in Jackson. Shortly after 11 o'clock, PG&E crews were able to successfully restore power to all of those affected. Well, more troubles for the Calaveras Unified School District. With the end of the school year just days away, the Calaveras Unified Educator Association has filed an unfair labor practice charge against the school district. Now, the association alleges that the district is interfering with the union's right to represent its members, among other allegations. Now, in a news release this week, the union said at a staff meeting May 17th at Jenny Lind Elementary School, a Calaveras Unified official harassed, insulted, and scolded union members while Superintendent Mark Campbell, quote, looked on. Well, Association President Lorraine Angel said in a statement that the act is unlawful under the Educational Employment Relation Act, and the charge was filed with the Public Employment Relation Board last Friday. Angel went on to say in a statement, quote, Our students and teachers deserve better. Our community deserves better. End quote. Well, in response, District Superintendent Campbell says the district will continue to engage in the process involving mediation and fact-finding, keeping all lines of communication open with the desire to reach a resolution as soon as possible. Now, the Educator Association and the district reached an impasse in their contract negotiations some time ago, with the union also concerned about reducing class size for transitional kindergarten to third grade. Firefighters from multiple agencies as well as Sutter Creek Police and PG&E rushed to the scene of a structure fire in Sutter Creek yesterday morning. The fire started around 11.50 a.m. in the garage of a home on Hanford Street near the intersection with Main Street. Firefighters arrived to find a large fire and power lines down. The residents of the home were evacuated safely. They had the fire knocked down by 12.30 and PG&E worked to secure the power line at the same time. No details yet on the extent of the damage or the cause of the blaze. Well, Calaveras Unified School District officials sent out a call to all parents yesterday after two students allegedly made some threats. According to Calaveras High Principal Mike Merle, they were notified by the Calaveras County Sheriff's Department about a threat by one male and one female Mark Twain Elementary student that they were going to shoot up their school, then head to Calaveras River Academy, then Calaveras High School to do the same thing. Both students were taken into custody and released to their parents. Law enforcement had a presence at all district campuses throughout the day yesterday. Well, Lake Comanche Village residents could have more reliable, high-quality drinking water in the future. Currently, about 700 customers there serve drinking water by a troubled well system. The Amateur Water Agency partnering with East Bay Mud and Calaveras County Water District to bring treated Moak River water from a new East Bay Mud Comanche South Shore water treatment plant to those Comanche area homes. Now the first phase of the project resulting from the study primarily affects East Bay Mud customers currently under construction. Expanding the project to serve Lake Comanche Village customers is the second phase of the project and serving CCWD customers would be the project's third phase. Agency staff is currently investigating funding options for the project's construction through California Drinking Water State Revolving Fund with a focus on grant funds that would not have to be paid back. Now, in other business last week, the AWA Board of Directors voted in an inflationary rate increase, about 75 cents a month on average, and worked on a plan that would increase water availability in the upcountry. Yesterday was National Dam Safety Awareness Day, and PG&E wants people to think about that before hitting the river. PG&E has storage reservoirs throughout the service area, including the gold country. While they take many precautions and regularly inspect and maintain dams, it is important to remain alert. PG's, uh, PG&E's Brandy Merlot says to head to the river with a plan. 
Make sure you have an evacuation route planned out and practice with your family. Also, have an emergency kit in case you're trapped. If waters rise quickly and you are unable to avoid them, drop anything that can weigh you down, stay calm and lie on your back with your feet up and pointed downstream. Go with the current and move diagonally until you reach the shore. For more information, and it is a, uh, more information is available on the PG&E website at www.pgne.com slash hydrosafety. East Bay Mud will be conducting a vegetation management burn about 10 acres in size off Stony Creek Road and Party Reservoir in the Jaegers Gulch area on Wednesday the 7th. Smoke will be visible in the area, specifically northeast of Party Recreation Area. Crews will begin work at approximately 9 a.m. on the 7th. The burn will be canceled and rescheduled if there are extreme fire conditions or inclement weather on or around that date of the scheduled burn. Any questions or for more information, call 772-8204. And you can get your own poster commemorating the Kennedy Mine Foundation's 20th anniversary. I own artist George Lambert created the image of Kennedy tailing wheel number one, which is featured on the poster. Now the 16 by 20 inch posters are available for only $20 and can be purchased at the Kennedy Mine gift store on weekends. Amador County Chamber of Commerce office on Main Street, Jackson, and will also be for sale at the Kennedy Mines 20th Anniversary Benefit Dinner Thursday, June 22nd at the Kennedy Mine. Now, At the dinner, the foundation will kick off its Dig Deep campaign with a funding goal of $35 per foot of mine depth to preserve and restore the historic head frame, buildings, and property. Sales of the poster also benefit the foundation's work. Local promotion and graduation ceremonies are happening this week. Independence High and North Star will hold their graduation ceremonies, uh, or well, held their graduation ceremonies uh, yesterday evening, my bad. Uh, and Jackson Junior High and Ion Junior High are holding their promotion ceremonies tonight. Uh, ja- uh, Amador High School graduation begins at 7.30 on Friday, Argonaut at 8 on Friday, and Bret Hart High School at 7.30 on Friday as well. All right, that's a look at local news on a Gold Country Thursday morning, this first day of June, from the KVGC News Center. I'm J.D. I'm Joey Geedy. And I'm Jim Geedy reporting.